Well, you guys got another video. Quite a few people have asked for how to dual boot Windows and Linux together. It's pretty straightforward and easy to do. If you do want to get used to Linux, it's probably best to install Linux onto a virtual machine. That way you're not messing around with your Windows based system. But if you're looking to uh, use both operating systems, then dual booting is a good way of doing that. So what we've got here is a Windows 11 system using classic shell here. But what we're going to do is we're going to dual boot this with Ubuntu, but you can choose whatever flavor distro that you want to use for your dual boot. So first up, let's go to control panel here. Now I'm using a virtual machine, so I'm going to have to uh, reduce the size of the actual drive. Now it's always advisable to use a separate drive if you can, but in this one, we're going to be using the same drive and I'm just going to uh, shrink the drive down so I've got some unallocated space available for Linux. So you will need to make sure you've got enough space available. So let's go ahead and we'll go to disk management and we'll reduce the size of this main drive here. So first off, let me go into here. So computer management here and inside computer management, there will be an area called disk management and we can now change the size of the drive. So if you've got one large drive, you can uh, make it smaller by reducing the size of it. Now, as you can see here, there is already unallocated space here, 70 gigabytes ready for Linux to be installed onto. This is on one drive. You can see disk zero is the drive itself. And we do have our uh, C drive there. Now, if you do have one big drive with some space on it, what you can do is right click on the C drive itself and hit shrink and reduce the amount of storage that you want for that to be used for Linux. So whatever yours is, uh, you can just reduce it down here and shrink it and it will give you the unallocated space that you need for uh, Linux. Next, you're going to need to download a Linux distro of your choice. I'm just going to be using uh, Ubuntu here. It's not my go to uh, distro that I would use for people. But again, we're just going to be using it for this video, but you can use whatever flavor of Linux you want to use. So we're just going to download this uh, onto our computer here. This will download the ISO file. I'm not going to show you how to create a bootable USB flash drive with Linux. I'm just going to boot to uh, that bootable drive now. And you can now see it says try or install Ubuntu right here. So I'm going to click on this and literally boot to our Linux um, distro so we can see what it actually looks like. You'll see something like this and you may see some writing going up on the screen and then you will get the desktop. Now we haven't installed Linux as of yet. We're just trying Linux on Windows. We haven't installed it. We've just booted to it. So next, if you want to install it, you would need to hit install Ubuntu just right here. And it will say the same for a lot of the other distros. You would just click on the install. Then you would choose your keyboard layout here. I'm gonna go for UK here and then we can go continue and move on to the next step. Normal installation is perfectly fine for this video, and we can see download updates while installing Ubuntu. I'm going to leave that check marked, and I'm also going to check mark install third-party software for graphics and any Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats that we'd need. Click continue then, and this will move on to the next step. Now we're getting to the point where it's going to say install Ubuntu alongside Windows Boot Manager. This is because Windows uses the Windows Boot Manager. And what we're going to do here is we're going to install Ubuntu alongside that, i.e. dual boot. So we're going to leave that as is right here and click install now. Now we can see our selection here. You can check this out to make sure it's exactly how it's meant to be. And then click continue. And this will go ahead and install Ubuntu alongside Windows. Now you need to choose your location where you live. Mine's London, so I'm going to leave that as is and click continue. And now we need to give the computer account a name. So I'm going to give this one Brytech. You can call yours whatever you like, and you need to give it a password. Give it a nice strong password, something that's easy enough to type out quite a bit because Linux does ask you to do that. I'm going to log in automatically here just for quickness, but click continue next, and this will then start the process. Now I'll speed this process up, not to bore you to tears, but basically it's just now going ahead and installing Ubuntu alongside Windows. So all we need to do now is hit restart. And what it's going to ask you to do is remove any 
bootable media from the computer, i.e. your USB flash drive. Now we can see the grub menu. It doesn't look that pretty, but don't worry, I'll change this for you and make it look something more nicer. You can see it says Ubuntu and also Windows Boot Manager. So we're going to choose Ubuntu here and boot into Ubuntu. And now you're going to get a bunch of stuff saying uh, online accounts and all that sort of stuff. We're just going to skip all this and uh, I'll show you basically how to change that grub menu to something a little bit more pleasing. And uh, what we're going to do now is choose here, skip for now. And once we've done this, click next. And we don't want to send it any information. So anyone who says that uh, Linux doesn't harvest data, it does. But you can see right here, no, don't send information here. And it's just waiting to do some stuff here. So I'm just going to wait. There we go. Location services, you can turn that on if you wish. If you use weather and stuff like that, it wants to know where you're located. You can turn it off if you want to and click done. That's it. We've now installed Ubuntu alongside Windows. And it's that simple. You've now dual booted Windows and Linux. But like I said, we want to change that uh, Grub menu there to something a little bit more pleasing. So what we're going to do is install uh, some software here. But before we do that, let's quickly uh, go to the terminal here. So here is all your apps. So we're going to go to terminal, open up the terminal. And when we open up the terminal, you should see the software updater coming up here. It's asking us to update that. So I'll let that install here quickly. So I'm going to go install now and uh, let that install all of those for us for our software that's already pre-installed in this package. It's going to ask you for your password that you set up for your Ubuntu account or your other Linux distro that you use. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in and we'll just let the uh, software updater do its thing. It's going to install all the updates for the software that's installed on this actual operating system, which is Ubuntu. But yours might be different and you can do this at any time. And uh, what we're going to do is let this finish off. And once it's finished doing the software updates, it's going to ask you to restart now. So I'm going to say restart later, and I'll do that in a second when I've done all these updates here. So first off, let's open up the terminal again. And from here, we're going to put a couple of commands in sudo space apt space upgrade and push enter. It's going to ask you for your password again. So type in your password and that's now done. And it'll say, do you want to continue? So I'm going to say yes here. And there we go. That's all now done. And now we can do again sudo space apt space update and then push enter again and it's going to update all that stuff. That's all done. And now we can download that software that I wanted to install to change the menu. So let's go sudo space apt space and uh, we're going to do install and then space and then refind just something like that. And then it will say, do you want to configure refind? I'm going to say yes. So push enter and now that's going to install that software and now we can close off the terminal and that's it. We're done. Nothing too difficult there. So now we can close off the terminal and what we're going to do now is do that restart because that's what it wanted us to do. So let's go up to the top here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to restart the system. So restart and there we go. Let's now restart in Ubuntu and there is our nice new menu that we've just installed. A lot more nicer than that uh, grub menu that we had and this is called Refind and it's been around for quite a long time. So along here we can hide these two icons here. These are uh, the ones that we want to hide. We want to keep one of them because it's for our Ubuntu operating system. Yours might have a mint icon there or whatever it is you used. But again you can use this for other distros as well. So we're just going to hide the uh, the EFI and we're also going to hide the boot EFI for Ubuntu. So just push delete key and say yes and this will hide those right there. So now we've got a nice little dual boot going on and that's exactly what we want on this system to make it much more easier to uh, select which one we want to boot to. So let's go ahead and put this to the test here. Now, if you haven't used Refine before, it does have a, some useful icons down on the bottom here, which you can use. There's a, a restart, a shutdown, and also there's some other things here. So let me quickly boot back into our operating system here. And there we are. We're back into Ubuntu. And that's now done. And what we'll want to do is I'm going to quickly restart again and go into Windows here to show you uh, what you would do now. So restart again. And it's going to now give us the option to restart into Windows. So you've got these little icons here. You can navigate 
about refined and about some other stuff you can click on these and again like i said these are just pretty self-explanatory manage your hidden tags these are the ones that we've uh, hidden uh, from the menu we haven't deleted them even though we hit delete it's just ma mainly hidden them right here and we can restore these by clicking on them and restoring them it tells you exactly what to do on the screen right here now you can customize all this menu as well if you want to that's for another video if you want to see that video then let me know in the comment section below I'll be happy to make those videos for you on how to customize your refined menu so we're going to restart the system once more and now we're going to be booting into windows and there we go we're going to be booting straight up to windows just like we did before so we booted into ubuntu and now we've booted into windows that simple so i'm just going to go back into uh, ubuntu here because I want to show you exactly what's happening here inside Ubuntu so you can understand where this menu is. So let's quickly restart into Ubuntu and uh, I'll quickly navigate to that location. So on the left hand side, you've got some icons here. One of them says files. So let's go into files. These are where your files are. And inside here, we're going to go to other locations, click on this one and then go into computer. And then you will see inside here a boot folder. So let's go into boot. And inside here you will see EFI. And you can see a red cross on it. And that's because we need to open this up and put our password in. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to put the password in and push authenticate. And this will, let me just type that back in again. And uh, this will give us access to the EFI folder. Now what you can see here is boot, Microsoft, Refined, Tools and Ubuntu. So the Microsoft is your Microsoft uh, boot menu and you also got your Ubuntu on here and we've got that Refined which is the one that it's using for that lovely little menu that you see here. You can go inside here. I wouldn't advise you to play around with this if you're not familiar with this sort of stuff. But inside here is all your icons and these for the different operating systems when you're dual booting, it will use these and you can customize this. So let me know again in the comment section below if you want to see any sort of customization on this. And here we have our uh, refined.config file. So let me just put my password back in again. And this will open up the uh, refined.config file. And you can see there's comments on here to comment things out, these little uh, hash marks. And you can see the timeout is 20 seconds. So if I wanted to change this to make it 30 seconds, that will be the refined menu that you see on the screen, which has Ubuntu and Windows on it. I can make that a little bit longer rather than it timing out if I wanted to. And you can make changes in here if you know what you're doing. If you don't, then probably leave it well alone. Otherwise, you'll end up breaking something. So to, to comment things out, you would use the hash. And if we remove the, uh, the actual comments, to make them usable, you would remove that hash and it will make it readable. And that's basically how you can set up your dual boot with Linux and Windows. And again, you can set up that refined uh, menu there, which makes it a lot more nicer. And you can customize the icons there. You can find your own ones and overwrite the ones that are in there if you want to do that, if you want to go that far into it. But basically, I think it looks good enough as it is. But if you do want a theme on there, you can do themes as well. And if you want to see more on that, then let me know in the comments section below and I'll be happy to make those videos for you. Anyway, but that said, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the next video. I'll see you on the Discord server. Bye for now.